What if I were to tell you that scientists may believe that humans a long, very long time ago started growing facial hair because of the protection that it offers with strikes to the face, protecting the skull and the brain underneath it? Absolutely. Now, even if we can't really prove that that's the reason why we have facial hair, what a dang cool side effect, if anything else, and it is true. 100% provable that having facial hair will protect your skull and your brain when you have strikes to the face. Now, this is done with scientific research and experiments, and we're going to dive into the data and evidence in this video, and I cannot wait to tell you guys about it. Even more so, I can't wait to hear your, your responses, your thoughts down below in the comments. But first, we do have to have a quick introduction. My name is Dancy Bearded. Thank you guys for checking this video out. And if you're excited to hear about this and how we get the data, Data and what the data is, go ahead and punch the like button on this video. And if you're not subscribed, please consider it if you like learning about beards. And thank you to those existing, continuing, and returning subscribers out there. You guys are the backbone of this channel. I appreciate you so much. Okay, so scientists theorize that, hey, if we have this facial hair, maybe it helps with protection. There's got to be a reason biologically why we have this. And so they said, hey, maybe, yeah, punches to the face or strikes to the face are less likely to hurt you with facial hair. And then they're like, okay, how do we make a stuff? that is valid, that is legit, that will show that this is true or not. What they did was they came up, and I'll put some like graphics and pictures up over here from these studies, and I do have two different articles linked down below. Very, very awesome ones. Peer-reviewed scientific studies. So cool to see this being really studied. And it's on facial hair too, by the way. This isn't some head hair thing that's translated to facial hair. This is all about facial hair. I love it. Can't wait for more data to come out. So they wanted to simulate this. So they simulated a machine that's going to have the same strike force, the same distance, all the same variables, and then they'll make models of human skulls. Now, if you guys have followed science or anything like this for a while, they've gotten so good at mimicking the human body with these different models. If you watch like the show Forged in Fire, they'll, they'll make ones that uh, will replicate a head and the ribs and the inside. It's really crazy. So they made 60 different models, six zero. We're not talking about like one, two, and three. 60 different models with varying shapes of facial hair and sizes of facial hair, but they broke it down into three categories and they spread it out even with these models. The three categories would be fully shaven, stubble, and a full beard. Now, when they went into these, listen to the results. The fully shaven face with the same strike force as everything else, 100% of the time had a crack to the skull. Every single time it absorbed all the force and took bad damage. Now let's move on to the second group, and that would be the stubble beard, meaning short beard, just a few days of growth, just that little bit, when they did the same strike force, it would damage the skull 95% of the time. So you're like, okay, only 5%. Hey, I'll take whatever I can get. Just a couple days worth of facial hair growth is going to protect me 5% of the time. Cool. Now let's move on to the full beard category. Same variable, same situation. The skull was cracked 45% of the time with a full beard. Shaven, 100% of the time. Full beard, 45 Meaning... If you grow a full beard and you have a strike to the face in these conditions, and we can apply it, I'm sure, with a sliding scale either way with force, less force or more force, but if you are in these conditions and you have a full beard, you have a 55% chance more likely of not having damage to your skull. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing, and it's proven. How cool is that? Now, I'm not saying that you're better off in a fight or in combat with facial hair because there would be counters to that as well. Somebody may say, well, hey, if you have a full beard, they can grab it. That's a hazard. Okay, that's valid. Somebody may say, hey, if I'm going for submissions, I like to be fully shaven because I can slide out of them easier and maybe there's a little bit of force or friction that can be given with facial hair. Okay, I get that. But we're talking about strikes to the face and protection with having facial hair. So dang cool. What are your thoughts? What are your comments? Leave them down below. Do you have any questions? Did you read through it and see something else that's in there? I didn't want to make this too long and go into all the details, but pretty dang cool. They got a bunch of charts and graphs that show this, and it'll talk about at the peak point of force and the protection. Amazing, but it is proven. And, there, and let's break down the reason why. Why does this happen? Essentially, that force when the strike hits is spreading out over a greater surface area. 
Anytime you can spread force over a greater surface area, the less potent that that force is going to be on the object. So spread that force, keep growing that beard. If anybody says, hey, why are you growing your beard? <sighs> Protection. We got to make sure we're safe out here in the streets. It's crazy. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching. Please do me a favor, leave me a comment, even if it's just like, whoa, that's crazy, or I always knew that, or I read that study, anything down below would be amazing on this video. Thank you guys for watching today. My name is Dan C. Bearded. Stay bearded and stay positive.